Hi guys, it's Grace Pamela with StarMana.com and today I want to go over the different saving options um, that you can choose to save them as in Photoshop. Now I'm also going to go over what the difference between RAW and JPEG is when you're shooting with your DSLR camera. So I'm going to go ahead and go into Photoshop and I'm going to open up a RAW format in Adobe Camera Raw. So here I have it opening Adobe Camera Raw, and this is a raw file that I shot with in um, in my camera. So I didn't use JPEG. I always shoot with raw. It's up to you with preference, but the difference is JPEG is basically what you get. It's already uh, form. It's already pretty much flattened. And the way that I look at a raw file is it's kind of got multiple layers in it. You don't see those layers, but you can. It has. Uh, it stores all of the lighting and information and the details in your image. For example, now this is a raw format so I can show you. If it was JPEG it wouldn't be able to recover any of these blown highlights. It wouldn't be able, if my, armor, if my image was really dark like this and I got the lighting messed up, I wouldn't be able to really brighten it that much because it would start to look kind of wonky if it was JPEG. Now raw is great because you can you can capture all of the details that you already captured in camera, you just didn't quite get the settings right while you were there. So here you can see it starts to recover some of the details that you might have been, uh, that you might have missed in camera. And this is especially great for beginners if you're just beginning your photography venture and you're still practicing and getting it right. If you are a seasonal photographer and you are getting amazing images, um, in camera then yes you can use JPEG if you want it to be a faster process just because RAW can completely f um, make it completely look kind of boring and blah you have to actually work to make it pretty again like it looked on the back of your camera so I just wanted to really quick show you that shooting RAW the ability it has you can see if the highlights are blown it can completely bring them back and have all the details there from that day and it's really great um, for that. And you can quickly edit it to make it look like it's back to the way it was when you first started it also. And you can bring out the details in the shadows. And all kinds of neat stuff like that. So once you're finished, you can go ahead and open image and it will open, let's see as an NEF file. Now that is pretty much a raw file. You won't be able to use that anywhere. You can't print it, you can't upload it to Facebook or anything like that. So what you would need to do is you would need to save it as something else. So let's say you finished editing your image. You're gonna have to go to save as and then here you'll go to save as type and then you'll have a huge drop down menu full of different types of files. Now the only ones that are important are a PSD file, JPEG file, PNG file, and a TIFF file. A TIFF file is the next biggest thing. So if you are printing huge uh, prints and you need a lot of detail, this is the next best thing to a RAW file, and which is very large. A RAW file is the most giant um, file that you can have. And that's why if you do shoot in RAW, you want to make sure you have a lot of memory cards with you and a lot of uh, room. Because they do fill up pretty fast because of the giant files. So TIFF is also large, but not as large as RAW, and great for printing. So if you're planning on sending your images off to uh, Miller's Lab or wherever else you get your images printed, you can go ahead and um, use TIFF. You can also save it as a PNG file, which is a lossless file. That means it can't be, it doesn't lose any information um, and it doesn't compress like a JPEG would. So this is great for showing off your images on the web, um, but they are a little bigger than JPEG, so that's the only thing you need to look out for. So the next best thing for saving to your website or maybe Facebook is a JPEG, except it will lose, um, it will be compressed each time you save it and start to lose quality. So you want to make sure you're, you're absolutely finished one time, save it one time, and you should be good. JPEG are recommended for uploading to your website, 
and a smaller file because it's great for if so your website doesn't lose memory so fast um, because it can kind of get slow when you have a lot of large files on your website and Facebook will compress your images so if you use a JPEG um, it will compress twice so it will compress once when you save it as a JPEG and then it will compress again when you save it to Facebook or any other website that uh, saves it or compresses it but it also is great because it's a universal file it's pretty much the most well-known one to save it um, as JPEG and will upload to almost any website the other one is Photoshop PSD now this is great not for uploading or printing anywhere but this is great for your own personal use this is great for let me see let me go. okay so I'm gonna show you an example this is a PSD file you can see here I saved it as a PSD file because there were two layers on there that I wanted to save and refer back to for this shoot so I'm gonna go ahead and open it and you see here I saved these I wanted to save these two layers a PSD file is where you can save all of your layers and edits that you did to that image without losing it so these are the two effects that I did on this image and I wanted to save it so I can drag it over to another image from that shoot so let me show you really quick um, I'm going to go ahead and open. Uh, saving your PSD files are great sometimes for when you're trying to have consistency with your shoots and edits. Now this one is a little more edited than this one. But what I like to do is I like to drag over the same toning and effects that I did for the last one. So you can see it's not a very great difference, but it's just enough for me to get that right toning and start to get it to look more consistent with my whole entire gallery. And that's basically it. Now you know exactly what a PSD file does, a PNG file, a JPEG file, a NEF and RAW photo, and you know that it's better to shoot in RAW format rather than JPEG when you're shooting with your camera, but uh, obviously you can do JPEG if you are already a seasoned photographer and you know your stuff and you know what you're doing uh, in camera. Also, you can also shoot additionally RAW and JPEG, so then you have both options just in case you like the JPEG and you don't feel like you need to go back in and tweak but it's always nice to have that raw as a backup just in case but again that does take up a lot of room on your memory card and also these files take up a lot of room on your computer so you want to make sure when you do save it you have a lot of external hard drive to save it to see I saved mine to my external hard drive which has a lot of space in it so you can see um, I'm going to go down. You can see my local disk, which is my actual computer, it fills up pretty fast. So if I were to keep saving raw files and PSD files, very large uh, format, it's going to start to, I'm not going to have any room, and my computer's going to be slow, and I actually need to go in and get rid of some of that. But you can see I have five terabytes on my external hard drive, and I, I do keep additional hard drives so that I have a backup as well. So that's why you want to make sure you know about each file because if you don't know what each file does you're going to be saving them and you're going to be like wow what happened to all my computer space <laughs> so it's nice to know all of those details so if you have any questions let me know uh, and I will be happy to answer them thank you so much for watching